In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. In 2008, an expedition of climbers were working their way up a mountain called K2. K2 is the second highest mountain in the world after Mount Everest. It sits on the border between Pakistan and Nepal. Now as this expedition of climbers was working their way up K2, one of them, a Pakistani climber named Shaheen Beg, became very sick with pulmonary edema at Camp 2 on the way up the mountain. They were at around 21,980 feet when he got sick. Well, Shaheen was a very experienced mountaineer, and he knew that anybody who tried to come up the mountain to rescue him and bring him back down would be putting their life at great, great risk. And so although he was sick, he radioed down to base camp and said, I'm sick, I don't want anybody to come up and try to rescue me. He didn't want to put people at that kind of a risk. But there at base camp was a friend of his, another Pakistani man named Nadir Ali. Now Nadir was a cook. He was not a mountaineer. He had been hired as, as a cook for a Serbian team of climbers that was working their way up the mountain. He didn't know what it meant to climb the mountain like this. But still, he knew that his friend was in need. <coughs> he knew that his friend needed help. And he didn't want to leave his friend up there to die all by himself in the cold and in the dark. And so Nadir set out beginning at around midnight to climb all the way from base camp by himself with no mountaineering experience up to camp two to 21,980 feet. And he had one goal and one goal only, and that was to rescue his friend, to save his friend. He ignored the aches, he ignored the pains, the exhaustion, the cold. And finally, after 30 hours on the mountain, he returned to base camp with Shaheen in tow, literally in tow, driving him on a piece of rope. You probably heard the phrase, keep your eyes on the prize. Runners who are running a race can endure the exhaustion that they're going through if they keep their eyes and keep their mind on the finish line. Mountaineers who are climbing can endure the soreness, the cold, the discomfort, if they keep their eyes on the summit, or in this case, if they keep their eyes on the rescue, the task at hand. Sick people, people who are ill, can endure harsh, difficult, painful treatments if they keep their eyes on the goal of their own healing. Unfortunately, today, we are in the middle of the most distracted generation that has ever existed on planet Earth. We have a very hard time staying fixed on one goal. We have a very hard time keeping our eyes only on one objective. We have at our fingertips a world of information, everything we could possibly want to know. And yet, most of us, myself included, use that technology, use that ability, at best, simply as a way to distract ourselves. Simply as a way to keep our minds off of whatever it is that we're supposed to be focusing on. 
over the past 15 or 20 years or so, we've, we've developed, especially in the United States, the 24-hour news cycle, in which there is always something for us to be enraged about, always something for us to be afraid of, always something for us to be deadly concerned about. And of course, when we think about the news, when we think about our phones, when we think about all of these different sources of distraction, we see that there are vested corporate interests that want to keep us distracted, that want to keep us enraged, that want to keep us fearful and anxious. Because as long as we're distracted, then we're engaged with their product, and as long as we're engaged with their product, then we're seeing their ads and we're making money for those corporations. But we find also that we're distracted so often simply by our day-to-day -day concerns, simply by the needs that the day that's in front of us presents us with. What am I going to eat today? What am I going to put on? What clothes am I going to wear today? Did I do the laundry recently enough? Do I have clean clothes to put on today? Did I go to the grocery store recently enough? Do I have enough food to cook dinner? We become so distracted by these day-to-day -day concerns that very often we lose sight of what type of a life, what kind of a life are we trying to live? We're going through these day-to-day -day motions, but what kind of a person do we want to be? We focus so much on our own possessions, our own wealth, our own daily needs, that we lose the focus on what really matters. These distractions keep us from our goal. If a runner focuses instead on how sore his legs are, how out of breath he is, how much he needs a drink of water, well then instead of making it to the finish line, he'll probably stop right there and turn around and say, I'm good, not today. <coughs> If a mountaineer focuses on how cold she is, how out of breath she feels, how sore her feet are after all these days in these uncomfortable boots, well, then she'll probably turn around and head down the mountain instead of continuing toward the sun. If a person who's sick, a person who's ill, focuses too much on how difficult the treatment is, on how painful the therapy that they're going through is, then they'll give up hope, they'll lose sight of the goal of their healing, and they'll fall into despair and begin to believe that they'll never be cured. And for us, as long as we're distracted, as long as our minds are scattered every which way, then we can never really stand before God in prayer. We can never really present ourselves to God in prayer and in worship. Because in order to do that, in order to stand before God in prayer and offer our lives to Him, well, we first of all have to be within our own self, centered, grounded, rooted. But as long as we're distracted, floating here and there, then we lose that lose sight of the goal of prayer and maturity growth in our faith. And so we're called to ignore the distractions in life and to keep our eyes fixed instead on our goal, which is our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In today's epistle that we heard so beautifully read today, St. Paul tells us that as Christians we rejoice in our suffering. We don't allow our suffering to distract us. <coughs> we don't allow our suffering to cause us to fall into despair. Instead, he says, we rejoice in our suffering. Why? He says, suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. I was struck a little bit 
when I was reading these words from St. Paul by the word character that he uses. Endurance, he says, produces character. And so I looked at the Greek and I saw that the Greek word that St. Paul uses here, that we have translated as character, uh, could also be translated as maturity, experience, something that has stood the test of time and has lasted and has endured. So endurance produces experience. Endurance, endurance produces maturity. Endurance produces this character of lastingness within us when we have endured the difficulties, endured the pains, endured the hardship. And then we come to the place where we find within us hope. And we never give up on our hope that our present sufferings, our present difficulties, our present daily needs are bringing us into the joy of Christ's kingdom. In today's gospel we hear, if your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. The word sound here could better be translated as simple or single. Some of the older translations, like the King James, translate this word as single. In other words, our Lord is saying here, if we're focusing on everything at once, if we're trying to focus our, our attention on all these distractions of life, then what happens? We become paralyzed. We find ourselves unable to move forward. But if our eye is single, if we focus only on one thing, then we find within us the hope that we need to endure the pains, the sufferings, and the difficulties of this life. Then we can endure all these things for the sake of our one goal, which is Jesus Christ and the hope that he has given to us. Amen.